Hi everyone, this is Howard from Ford to Learn to Fly. Today we're going to have a look at the GNS 530 from Flight Sim Builder. I have this installed in a panel, we'll have a look at that afterwards, but for now I just have it sitting right on the desk in front of me, and I've got um, a camera focused right on it. As you can see now, that screen is actually coming right from the sim. If we go take a look inside this, what I've simply done is transferred this screen right here over to the bigger screen that you're seeing there and that way we can actually see it in action so now we can actually just go in and touch it and make it happen so by reaching over now and using the physical dials or the physical buttons I can now interact with the GNS 530 and for those who haven't ever used the 530 before it can have your comm radios and your nav radios and your moving map, flight plan, etc. And I say etc because these are like standard functions that you'd see on G1000 or other types of systems. But the 530 is built in to so many other airplanes in the sim. And here in MSFS, looking at, here I'm looking at the standard 172 from Asobo. Uh, this one is actually the modded version from WB Sim. You'll notice the, the logo on the outside here on their livery. And um, this modded one is more realistic. It's like a ton of work that they've done to bring it to a more realist realistic level. And that's what I'll be flying today. But in there, just like in the stock 172, they have the 530-430 combination. And the 430 can certainly be used for COM2, NAV2. It can also be used for other things. But certainly the one unit is sufficient and that's what we're going to be doing here. Now I'm starting out at Liverpool which is C-Y-A-U. You can see that on the screen and what we're going to be doing is just setting it up right in there manually so you can see what how to do that and then hopefully and I say hopefully um, this modded plane now I'm still new to it and uh, I'm gonna go work with its autopilot but I, I should be able to set up an, an RNAV approach and go into Halifax so let's start out by taking a look at um, the flight plan itself. Right now the flight plan has nothing, so we want to make a flight plan. Um, and we're going to do a simple flight plan, we'll add one waypoint maybe, um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So to give you an idea of what we're doing to play with this, and I say play you guys because it's all experimentation, right? You can see my trail here, I did a test flight just to see how it would go, see how long it would take. And probably through this part of the journey, I'll speed it up so you don't have to wait here in this uh, in this overview. But you can notice that we're starting from here, from uh, this area. Well, it's actually focused on my airplane, <laughs> CYAU. And this is Liverpool, Nova Scotia, nice little airstrip. Uh, it's actually got um, some modifications on it, so there must be some, some type of scenery. There must be some kind of scenery that I installed here because it looks gorgeous. Uh, maybe we'll add this waypoint here at this airport and this one will pop up here at the Bridgewater Dayspring Airport. Uh, we might add that in just so that we can just see the autopilot work but that's not necessary we can just go straight. Over here though what's really important is that where we're landing or where we're going and you can see here when my first attempt here you can see that I've actually followed an actual RNAV approach going into Halifax. Now this is actually important that I go into this runway because that runway is where this kind of airplane would stop at the terminal where the smaller planes would be. This runway here is very long and I would have to fast taxi or just land long uh, just to get up to the end here where the actual um, airport where the terminal is. So hopefully you know we'll set it up for the approach so that we pick the approach going into the appropriate runway. So as we saw in here the runway I'm after and the approach I'm after this is runway 32 and whatever that approach is we're gonna go find it. Um, but it's probably gonna be this turning approach like this probably starts from here but we'll find it anyway and we'll just go through it in the 530. So let's go have a look at that now. Now I could have easily just gone straight in here to 05 that's an easy approach. Um, and then who cares if we fast taxi in the sim, right? And that's that's probably the easiest way to do it. And then we may end up doing that anyway. Well, we'll figure something out. Bedford happens to be the hometown of Andrew, the co-host on my Twitch channel. And we'll fly right over his house in this flight plan. So let's do that. Okay, so now we see where we're going. And I'm going to remove the... the uh, Oops, the map. I'm going to... Ah, I can't remove it. Why can't I? 
delete aircraft trail there we go and so then we can start a new trail so here cyau we're going to add in cdy6 and then um, and then we'll just leave it like this for the moment over my head there perfect all right so let's focus now on the actual unit and uh, I want you to see this. I'm going to do this a different way than normal. I want you to see this on this screen also. So let me just focus in there like this. So you can see right there, there's the same screen that you see on the real unit. The real unit meaning the physical unit. And sorry, I'm using the Toby Eye Tracker and it's tracking my eye. As I look down at the physical unit, it actually <laughs> starts moving around. So let's just do that. I want to show you both screens. I want you to see that what you're doing on the physical unit is the same as what you're doing in the sim. Now, if I were in the sim right now, I mean, I mean, I am in the sim. If I were to want to use it right now, I got to use these cursor controls. Not so bad on the ground because the plane is steady, and I can just spin the wheels. Mainly, the wheels are the problem in this in any kind of sim like this because you've got to put your cursor on there and hold it, or or w use your uh, mouse wheel. But look what you have to do. You got to get your head right in the cockpit. And you don't have any idea what's happening outside. So that's, you know, I'm doing it on the ground right now. But um, the idea of using a physical box is that you can go back to a normal view like this. Go back to a normal view or even that view while you're flying. Or even you're looking around. Or in my case, I've got the Toby. I'm looking around outside the plane while I'm flying. And while I'm looking around, I can't be having my head in the cockpit like this all the time and who knows what's happening to the plane outside so in real life in real life you're flying the plane and you're glancing down and working with any of the instruments that you have to touch at the time so while we're on the ground now we'll do our flight plan so let's go have a look flight plans right here we're on the flight plan page let me just come back one there's our normal nav page and all the uh, and all the nav areas all the nav pages but i'm just going to hit the flight plan button right here when i hit that button now you can see there's no flight plan yet we're just going to put our flight plan in. And the first one, of course, was the airport that we're at right now. And uh, if you'll remember when we looked at that with little nav map, then it was CYAU. Now I'm going to leave this up at the top of the screen just so you can see what's happening. CYAU. So I'm just going to start turning. Oops, wrong way. We'll go here. C, A, B, C, Y. I'll go backwards. WXY, I know which way to go. CYAU, I'll go forwards. Forwards meaning clockwise, backwards meaning counter. If I'm going back to the last letters of the alphabet, I'll turn left. I'll, I'll turn counterclockwise. CYA, I'm going to go here. A. And then I'm going to go counterclockwise to get a U. Just like that. There it is. Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Enter on that. Add this waypoint. Sure. And that's our starting airport that we're at right now. All right, now I'm going to actually put the ending airport in first, and it could be as simple as that. So you can see on the map here, CYHZ, no problem. I'm going to just put C again, so clockwise to C. Move it over with the big knob. Um, uh, it's also a Y, like a lot of things in Canada, CY. There we go. And it's um, HZ or HZ, however you want to say it. And I'll just go to here, G, H. And to get my Z, I'm just going to go backwards on this one. And it'll do it just like that. Halifax International, enter. Add the waypoint, sure. And there's my whole flight plan right there. Now, I do want to add in, as I said. And, you know, the, I, I, I'm not here to show you all the functions of the 530. But I am here to show you that the Flight Sim Builder 530 does everything that your sim can do, whether it be X-Plane or whatever else you're using. I'm using MSFS. It'll have any, if there are any limitations, it'll be from the sim, not from the hardware. Each of the buttons are doing what they're supposed to do. Here's your Direct 2, it works. Here's your menu, it works. Everything works as it's supposed to, without any tinkering. I didn't have to go in and map the buttons. I didn't have to go play with anything. I just ran the Flight Sim Builder tool and then started up the sim with it and then away I went so let, let's just put this in now if I put it right if I put the next flight uh, the next waypoint here it would stay there it would be after the uh, Halifax Airport so I'm going to just bring this cursor back and I'm going to add it in here so I want to be able to add another waypoint in here so I just start turning from here and I start picking it from here and it's C 
uh, C, D, Y, 6, I think it was. C, D. So we'll go here to D. Zoom. Y. Go backwards. B, W, X, Y. Boom. And then I thought there was a 6 there. There we go. 6. Bridgewater Day Spring. Enter. Add it. And you can see what it did. It put it in the middle where I was. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. All right. Now, I haven't put in any altitudes or anything. I'll do that in the um, autopilot. But there's my flight plan, the way I want it. All right. That's as simple as that. We could go further, but I'm just going to do it like that. Now we have a flight plan. You can see that the first uh, waypoint is already set up, ready to go. All I got to do is take off, put on the autopilot, and away I go. This is one of the screens that I like right here because it gives me information on the right plus it still gives me the moving map and you can certainly still move in and out from that moving map there you can see our first waypoint and there's our destination and you can even get drill it right down as one well, as far as you want now let's have a look at the approach we'll add the approach to our flight plan here I've got one of the runways actually we'll take this one even though it's the longer runway that an airliner would use uh, we should be coming in on one of the shorter ones, but we are coming from the from the southwest down here. So we let's just use the, this approach is nice and easy. It lets us see how to use the 530 without any complications. Um, so let's do this one. We'll do the runway 05 uh, RNAV Y, and we'll pick the odd cast as our pr approach instead of the other the other two. All right. Although they, those can be fun, we'll just do our direct in. So you can see here we got to be 1800 by the time we hit here. Now, you know the capability I'm showing you here. The buttons work as they should, as they should. The functionality and the brains behind this thing are obviously coming from the sim. This is a screen from the sim, and it's just another screen on your computer. It really is just another desktop. All right. So uh, what I want to do now is I just want to see, does this sim do approaches? Can it find the right approach? Can it follow it? And all the rest of it. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go down here to procedure. I'm going to select the approach, enter. When I select that approach, RNAV32, that would have been nice, but uh, we're not going to use that one. We're going to come in, oops, we're going to come in on, let's go pick one, and let's find number five here. 5Y, RNAV 5Y, that's the one. And we don't want that one, we want the odd cast, OD. So we're going to just go through them here. There's the odd cast right there. I'm just using the inner outer dial for all this stuff. And then enter when I have it. That looks about right. The odd cast is down here in the bay, and we are going to pick that up and follow that all the way in. All right, and we got the chart in front of us. By odd cast, we want to be at 1800. Uh, sorry, 3,000. 3,000 by odd cast. We want to be 1,800 by the time we get to the um, this this uh, this area right here. Simple enough. Okay, we should be able to do that. Let's just make sure that we're at 3,000 feet. So I, I'm going to make it easier for us here. I'm going to actually go this short flight at 3,000 feet. Why not? All right. Now it says load or activate. If you I'm going to just load it for now. We'll activate it as we get closer. You see what it's done now? It's actually put it down further. There's our oddcast. There's our lopma. And so this this is great. This is the approach the RNAV5Y put in there. Now, if if uh, if the controller gives us a different approach, then we would just come back in here, pick a different approach, and it would add it all in, All right, which is really cool. All right, so let's do that. Now we'll go back to flight plan here. And we're ready to rock and roll. Let's just have a quick look. I'll just come back to a bigger screen. And we'll just have a quick look here. And it, there it has. You can see a little cluster of things in there. Once we get closer, I'll show you that. But it's all in here already. That's pretty cool. Very easy to use. All right, let's get rolling. There we go. Announcing taxi. This is a uncontrolled airport, so perfect. That looks like pretty mean weather up there. We're on live weather right now for Nova Scotia on this hot July day. So, uh, where we go? This airplane is a, a modded 172 by WB Sim. And it's got some really good stuff that they've put in it. I mean, a lot of work, and we really like it. All right, ready, set to go on 25. This is Fox Lima Tango Fox taking off on runway 25, departure straight out. 
Liverpool traffic. So um, what we're doing now is uh, this is actually the opposite direction, but that's okay. We were closer to this end. We've got a bit of a crosswind, but we should be fine. I'm going to rock and roll, and we've got our time noted. We're rolling. Temperature pressures are in the green. Things are good as we get to the proper speed here. Things are a bit dim, isn't it? We've got a lot of cloud up there. Wow. All right, we're approaching 50, approaching rotate speed. Let's just give that nose a little nudge, and away we go. And we're on our way, everybody. So uh, we're going to just do like a typical kind of circuit here just to turn around because we are going the opposite direction. You can see that on the 530. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think we should turn around. We got ourselves a gorgeous day out there when you take a look. Better from here, actually. And now we've got 500 feet or so. We can just go around and initiate our climb. I didn't put in an actual climb. We'll do that while we're going or I'll just lock it in at 3,000 or so. Because 3,000 is where we're supposed to be when we get to that first fix. So we'll be good. If 25 was what we were heading, we just want to put 25 down at the bottom here. Simple as that. And we should be able to pass the airport as we go by. Over that away. There it is. Okay, we're just simply doing a circuit, really. You guys round it downwind now for... Um, we took off on 25, we're on the downwind for 25, but we're certainly not coming back around. We'll just keep on climbing. I'm just going to adjust some trim here. Because we're, we want to climb a bit more. And we're heading on uh, 1500, heading to 2000. That's nasty looking stuff up there. Wow. Alright, so what I want to do at this point, I just want to, as I'm climbing, turn on my target altitude here. Let's just come over here to the autopilot. Yeah, I'm off to the left. All right, let's do that to intercept it. And once it's intercepted, then we will uh, be, we'll be good. All right, let's see what that does. It's a nasty-looking day. I think I have all my lights are on. Nav, strobe's on, good. I'm going to leave my landing light on. I do that in real life. I want people to see me. I really do. I don't want to get hit. <laughs> Look at that nasty. We'll probably climb out of it. Looks like we might come out of it at some point. That's real weather, you guys, what's happening. All right, we're coming up on three. It should actually level off. The speed should pick up. Alt altitude three looks good over here. Yep. This thing is still, oh, there we go. Good. And speed certainly is picking up. Nav hasn't kicked in yet, but you can see I'm going to intercept it. As you can see right here, if we'd actually just zoom in a little on the range you can see that I'm heading toward it. I could do a sharper turn but there's no need to do that. There I'm at 3000 should be locking in. All right so we're on our way we will intercept it soon and then we'll load the approach as we get toward the bay. All right now let's just see where we are on the map. There we are. We came out of here the wrong direction turned around and I did I wasn't aligned properly on a downwind, so I didn't actually pick it up. I could have picked up that line a lot faster. But what I've done here is I've obviously was going out too far from the line and now I'm going back in. Um, I could actually put I could actually put the flight plan in here so you can see where we're supposed to be going. But this should pick it up now. As you can see it is now. It's actually turning toward the magenta line. It's picking it up right here. And you can see that right here. looking good and it's going to be um, there's the the airport that we're going to fly past when we get to this area right here we are locked in now let's come back to here where we are we are locked in now what I'll do is I'll speed this up everybody so that you can we don't have to sit and watch the whole boring flight all right the whole purpose here isn't to watch a flight the purpose is to see the 530 in action now to give you, you know, to show you what we're doing as this happens before I speed it up, you can see here that we're coming into, oh yeah, it's Oddcast, that's the name of it, O-D-K-A-S. And um, when we get to Oddcast, we'll be at 3000 and we'll descend to 1800. You can see that here, to 1800 and we'll be at 1800 at Lopma and it should pick up the approach when we activate it. We're going to activate before we get to Oddcast just so that it knows where it's going. 
And it should take us all the way in for landing, you guys. It should be easy enough. Now, that, that part of it isn't really the 530 in action, but that part of it is the Sims airplane that we're flying, and it is, obviously, the way the Sim's working. But this is a perfect tie-in with the 530 in the Sim to the autopilot, and that's what we're seeing here. And the fact that we can manage these things ourselves right in the actual physical box. And I love the fact that we've got this physical box to work with. I also have the Flight Sim Builder G1000 P, uh, PFD and MFD and I'll do a, a separate uh, session on that just to show you what that looks like but I'm very pleased with their product and uh, that's a, a permanent part in my panel I have a flight velocity panel and that whole panel has all the instruments I need and I have another 530 mounted in there and I'll show you a video of that a quick clip of that uh, near the end of this one just to show you what that looks like and that they they uh, they have brackets that can be that you can mount to the sides of these and then put them into any enclosure that you want. All right, we're on our way. I think this part of it, I'm going to just uh, speed it up as we go along. Okay, we're now approaching Bridgewater Airport. It's just there under my wing. It's actually under my elevator there. You can see it. Or under my wheels. Just there. Oh, let's try it this way. Should see it coming up underneath us there, and you can see it on on the um, 530 also. If you just zoom like that, you'll see that we're passing overhead it. Coming up soon. Wow, very dramatic out there. But everything is as it should be, you guys. Whether we were using this or not, there's the airport here, yeah. and you can see on the 530 it's passing over it. But again, with that screen that you're seeing on the 530 is coming from the sim, you guys. It's just another screen. We pop it out using the right alt, and we use the mouse, and then we drag it down to that screen. It's just another screen. And for this and for this 530, what I did was I bought the, I think it's Starlink brand, USB to HDMI, so it added one more monitor for me. And you just plug that into a USB 3.0 port, and it works like a charm. make sure we're still on track. Nav Alt 3000 looks good. As you can see from the physical unit, I'm actually off by a little. That's okay. Everything looks good. Everything's locked in. CDY6 to CYHZ. So we're good. I'm going to go over and look at flight plan, see where we are. Yep, there it is. <coughs> and as we get closer, we'll do the approach going in. Looking great. We can actually load that approach at any time so that it picks it up when it has to. As you can see, we've still got quite a distance to go here. You can see we're here coming into this open water area. And we're actually going to start picking up way out here. Out here somewhere. Right out here somewhere. Huh. Well, let's just load that in while we're here. Okay. Out of the flight plan, into the procedure. Activate approach is already ready to go, so I'm going to say yes, approach is activated. Now let's go see what the flight plan looks like. Do you see that? It's just changed over to direct to odd cast, just like that. Perfect, that's what we want. I'm going to press flight plan, and here it's showing us the approach is the next part. If we didn't do the activate part, it would still go straight to the airport, and we're stuck at 3000. All right, but now we've actually said now do the approach. We've activated it. It's going straight to Oddcast. Away we go. Perfect. We're right on track. And uh, the distance, 34 nautical miles to that fix. Okay. We're going to fast forward the video again.
not far away. You can see on our 530, we got a distance of 22 point something nautical miles away from our first fix. And then we will see the action happen. Really, re you're actually seeing the autopilot working well um, and the database of the autopilot working well in the sim. But it's nice to see that you can actually have dials to do this. Now, I could simply tune, you know, using this dial, I could tune uh, my, all my comm frequencies on here and flip-flop them over, of course, just like normal, right? That's the normal way to do things. Oh, it happens to be the same one. <laughs> Let's just do another one here. And then over it goes. So, you know, this is so easy to use, you guys. Um, same with the nav. If I were using an ILS right now, then I would lock in a frequency and away I'd go on the ILS. But in this case here, I'm using a GPS RNAV approach, so I'm good. But, you know, we've done that too in this demonstration before with this airplane. We've actually done the, uh, the ILS approach going in 20 miles out, getting ready to descend. We will just descend down to 1800 as we hit that first fix. 20 miles out, there it is, Oddcast coming up. Yeah, we'll leave it about there. Looking good, rock and roll. When you see me looking back, you guys, it's a, my camera that's pointed right at the 530, the physical box. Um, so that's what I look at just to make sure it's still framed. I keep bumping things, you know. All right, let's... Um, it almost looks like I'm frozen. <laughs> so it happens when you fly over water, right? Yeah, I'm still moving. All right, good. Nasty out there, but we're still good. We got, we're clear enough as we go in. 18 nautical miles and we start our descent. Now, as you know, we don't have VNAV on this particular airplane, a 172. And uh, even if we did, we still wouldn't have auto throttle like some of you are used to. You know, some of you have flown these kind of routes and you know what you're doing, but I'm just showing you the 530 in action, you guys. It doesn't really have to be this long a video. I could just point at all the buttons and show you that they all work. Um, you know, I'm going to message right now to see if there's any messages. None! <laughs> well, because, you know, there's no messages because I have a departure and I have a destination. That's, that's the first thing they would tell us. But, uh, you know, the normal things that you would go through here, I'm just going to go through the nav pages, the normal pages that you would find in your nav. You know, just the, the things that some of you use all the time, all right? And that's what you would see here. And so um, I'm just going to go back to the normal page here, like this, and I'm going to go to my... This one I like the most because this one has... This one has um, all of the information that I need on this journey right now. All right, we're going to let that go for a bit more. We've got we've got 16 nautical miles to our first fix where all the action starts to happen. So we'll uh, we'll speed up the video at this point and uh, get to our fix. Now we could have we could have started the sim when we're on the world map. We could have set it up for an IFR flight plan. As soon as you do that, and, you know the the default is VFR direct, which is what we picked, and I made the flight plan right in the 530. But if we had started it with the world map and put in our starting and destination and picked IFR, low level airways, we would have had ATC the whole time. All right. Now we did leave from an uncontrolled airport, but we would have picked it up shortly afterwards, and. Um, and we could have seen that in action. I'm not here to show off ATC in action. I'm not here to show off an IFR flight. We're here to just see the 530 in action. And, you know, hopefully I've sped up the parts that are long and drawn out and boring so you guys can see it in action. Um, I give this, you, and, and a lot of you know that I have hardware that I test all the time. I give this 530 full marks. Perfectly fine. Works every time. Got a great feel. Easy to use. Um, I didn't have to tinker with, okay, this button, I want that to be a my power button, and this button, I want it to be the range, and this button. Yeah, I didn't have to make all that mess happen, all right? And uh, it just plugged in, and, and it just went. It has a power supply, it has a HDMI connector, and it has uh, the USB connector, because all of these things are all mapped somehow properly to USB so that the SIM can just find them. 
I think that's a big draw, you guys, because I've worked with other systems where you got to tinker with uh, SPAD Next or some other tool to map everything and make it all work. And this was just, it really was plug and play. And you can just set it down anywhere and use it. And that's what's really cool. And this little plastic holder here on the bottom comes with it to, s to let it sit on a table like that. And I'll show you afterwards, as I mentioned, I'll show you this mounted into a panel, which really looks well, really looks good in a panel. All right, six nautical miles to Oddcast. And in the message, you'll see the message pop up where it'll actually say approaching this waypoint. <clears throat> and I do apologize, I have to put my hand here when I push the button because it's not mounted anywhere. If I just push buttons, I'll push it right off the shelf. So I do actually hold it back here, but in my panel, on my other setup in my panel, it's already mounted and solid. I can just punch as all I want and it doesn't move for me. All right, out the window, still looking ugly, of course. Look at that mess, but it's over some gorgeous countryside. If you've never been to Nova Scotia, you just gotta go. And um, matter of fact, we, uh, I didn't even mention some of the famous things that are here, but <laughs> we weren't here for a tour. But, you know, Nova Scotia is home of the Blue Nose. And, of course, the, the working schooner right now is the Blue Nose 2, which is, uh, you know, the, the clipper ship that's famous on the dime, the 10-cent piece of the Canadian money. And uh, this is where it was made. And this is where it's still operating. All right, four. We got four. We're four away from Oddcast. As soon as we pass it, we're gonna we're gonna slip right down to 1800 real quick, and uh, let's just have a quick look over here. So I'm gonna dial in 1800 as we pass, and away we go from there. This is uh, for those who don't know. This is uh, a feedback part of this sim. This is the mod from WB Sim, and they give us this beautiful display inside the ADF. Now, of course, if you just press the buttons here, you go back to normal things, ADF, and they also he's also got DME stuff in here, but. Um, this actually has state saving on and it also has um, feedback here and these would end up being yellow or red if they were in trouble but I've got this thing um, I've got the mixture leaned out properly and away we go here we go oddcast it's looking good 2.4 rock and roll Oop, little bit of turbulence under this cloud and you should see it turn to the left. As it starts to turn to the left, we're cutting the power and we're going to our new altitude. All right, just like that. Oh, it's turning to the right, then it's gonna go left. Um, maybe, <laughs> it should go left. <laughs> All right, let's do that. We're at, now we're at uh, Oddcast the Lopma and you'll see it actually level up here. Let's just bring this down to 18. Right here, there's 2000. There's 18, and I'm going to arm it, and I'm going to drop it down, maybe by that much. I can do that, because I'm the only one in the plane. All right, it's gonna speed up, so I better pull back some power. Gotta manage the throttle manually, turning left as we expect. All right, love the sound of that sound. Looking good, if we take a look at this screen, oops, take a look at this screen, you can see where we are. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. There, that's a little cleaner right there. There's Oddcast, and it's moving on down. Following magenta line, and here you can see where we're headed next. Right there. All right. Let's go take a look so you know what's happening. We're heading down. We just passed Oddcast, and it's now lined up on a 53 degree down to Lopma. L-O-P-M-A. From the uh, profile view, you can see we have to be at 1800, and we will be. We're closing in on there soon, and uh, I'll pick up some throttle. Don't forget, as you level off, your plane could stall. 1800, and then we'll start our descent from there. Hopefully, autopilot will take over and make it happen from there. It looks like it might. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to... We are on GPS right there. We already did our procedure there. Actually, on here, oh, pick up some power, Howard. And on here, I want to arm that also. Uh, the approach right here. Or, there we go. Approach. There we go. Almost forgot. We're good. 1,800 feet. Sounds good. Let's pick that up a bit more. 
we still got some distance to go. It's a 172, you guys. You might even be in a bigger plane. You might even be setting up for a landing now, starting to reduce power and full flaps and whatever else you're going to be doing. In this case, um, I'm just going to put the, the pedal to the metal for the moment until we get in closer. Uh, as we pass Lopma, I'll probably slow it down from there. We're 2.9 nautical miles from Lopna, from Lopma, and we're supposed to be at 1800, and we are. Well, let's see if we can make that happen. I've got it, the approach armed right here, and we have a message. Let's see what that says. Arrival at waypoint Lopma, which it, we expect it say, we expect it to say. And let's pull some of that power back, just because I was starting to redline the, the tachometer. All right, looking good so far. All right, there we are in the sea of GPS coordinates. There's an airport. All right, I think I'm going to slow it down now. Even though it hasn't started the descent, I'm going to have to set up for at the approach. It should start the descent now. Isn't it? Wasn't it Lopma? Yeah, because we're almost there. As soon as we hit Lopma, it should actually start the descent. And as it starts the descent, we'll put up flaps and stuff. Yeah, I'm just going to slow it down just a bit now. I know, we're still quite a distance, but let's see this thing in action. We want to see it do it. Well, the RNAP part, we're just really showing off the plane, really. But seeing it happen in the 530, seeing it going on is pretty cool. But, you know, obviously that's... Oops, a little bit more power here. Whoa, we got some turbulence. This is great. So obviously this is, you know, tying into working with this. I can see here comes the slope here. It should pick it up and we should see our altitude start to drop. That should work. Okay, that's good. And there it goes. Look, it's a working. That's what's supposed to happen, you guys. Here it says approach. We're good. GS, we're good. And down she goes. And you can see my speed's picking up and I'm getting closer to the runway. You can see it right ahead. All right, time to cut some power. Got to get down into flap range. I don't want, you know, again, with the 172, uh, three degree approach, I don't want to be full flaps coming in, you know, creeping along. So, you know, I wait till this sort of last minute to put in flaps. Flap range is now. One flap is down. Till I get a little closer. Don't want my speed to drop too much at the moment. Rock and roll. Maybe I should label this video um, RNAV approach demonstration. <laughs> really, I'm just showing off the 530, you guys. I just love this thing. Love this thing. On the approach, one degree of flap, one notch of flap, I should say, 10 degrees. In we go. Landing lights are on. Look at that. And there's the runway up ahead. We're getting there. We're doing it. And we're pretty slow. A <laughs> little bit more power, Howard. <laughs> and uh, let's see this in action. Now, I'm going to take over once I have a visual. And as we get closer like this, I'm obviously going to have a visual. It bothers me in a 172 to come in on 3 degrees, you know. Because if I had a power failure at any time, I could drop into the trees. So, you know, I always come in higher with these smaller planes, especially single engine. Whew. That's some birds. I just passed some birds, you guys. <laughs> that was too close. Too close for comfort. All right, I'm not putting flaps down yet. I'm just too, to me, I'm just too close to the ground. Look at that gorgeous scenery. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, it will take us right to the threshold. It's an RNAV approach. All right, so it will look like it's going to fall short. At this point, I should have a visual. I'm going to put another flap down, and I'm going to cut the autopilot at this point, you guys. And I'm going to just pull it up a bit because that's just a bit too low. And there could be, you know, there shouldn't be trees on the approach, but that's just pull it up a little bit. I'm not on the, the exact slope, you guys, but it's safer this way. And then now I can take it down. This is a long runway. I'm going to do a long approach. I mean, a long landing. As you can see by the Vazzy, you know, it's like on the Pappies there, you can see that um, I'm obviously high. But that's fine. This thing's a very long runway. Welcome to Halifax International, everybody. 
gorgeous scenery. I think this is the scenery that comes from uh, Orbix. You know, the tower's looking at me going, what is he doing? No, they're not. Because, you know, they know what I'm flying. All right, take it in. I'm bleeding off some speed while I'm at altitude. Take it down to about 60, I'll be fine. I'll just drop the nose. In she goes. This is just easier than fast taxi, you guys. And we're down. And for some reason, we pulled left. And we're down. What if there's a message there that says, you have arrived? Actually, the message flashed, but then it's gone again. So, you never know. Welcome to Halifax International. Let's make sure I'm over the hold short. Yeah, I'm good. Flaps are up. Transponders on standby. Beautiful. Taxi light. Strobes are off. Landing's off. Good. Rock and roll. I would have had clearance at this point. It's because I haven't had any radio so far, I'm just going to leave it. Look at that Dash 8 over there. Air Canada. An Air Canada Dash 8. Of course, you'd see a lot of Air Canada and you'd see a lot of WestJet. And there's some WestJets right there. And you'll see, uh, this is actually good to see this, you guys. There we are at the airport. Actually shows the airport in there. We're done. And uh, now when I shut the avionics switch off, you're going to see it turn off on here too. You know, that's the way it should work, right? And, um, all right, so avionics are off. That's good there. We're going to just starve the engine. Beautiful. Everything else goes off. And we're cold and dark. We're great. All right, now the interesting part, I was just mentioning it to you, is that now you get out and you walk along this pedestrian area, pedestrian part, and from there, you can see you walk inside here, and away you go. It's not that bad, but when it's pouring rain or in the middle of snow, and I've been here in the middle of winter, it's kind of messy, you know? Now it looks to me, with all these different lines here, it looks to me like this is the newly painted line, probably with the add-on scenery that I should have come in this way. Who knows? But uh, that's all right. We did it. Yeah, this looks like the... Yeah, I guess it could be anything, right? Whatever they tell us. That's what it would be. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Thanks for hanging in there. Leave us your comments. Give me a follow if you wish. And uh, subscribe. It will help a lot. I'm just starting to build the YouTube channel. I've had the channel for a long time. Didn't use it very much. I used it once in a while for my online students. Now I'm going to use it a lot more. I'm going to do a lot more product reviews as more manufacturers trust me with their equipment to show it off. So hopefully you'll find that interesting, everybody. And we'll see you again in another video as I show off the G1000 setup, as I show off the flight velocity panel that I'm building. A lot more videos are coming your way. Thanks for being here, everybody.